Our article was really meant to demystify the process of accepting pets into a shelter environment. So URI, Urban Resource Institute, has been accepting pets into our domestic violence shelter for close to nine years at this point. So we really wanted to share our experience um, with other providers to give them the opportunity to learn from our experience and hopefully uh, feel that it's a, a manageable uh, issue that they can take on themselves. We know that uh, you know up to different studies show around 70% of Americans have pets in the household. We all know the impact that animals have on our emotional well-being, mental health, physical health, uh, and so really uh, we're looking to extend that benefit um, to anyone who has uh, animal companions. So someone who is experiencing homelessness or a family that is experiencing homelessness uh, still has a right to that companionship and that comfort and care um, in their lives. And so it's really important for programs to be able to welcome families together with their pets so they can have that continued companionship, healing, um, and, and as they recover uh, from trauma or whatever they have experienced, um, both the adults and children greatly benefit from having their animal family members together with them. We were and are a human services provider, so we didn't have the experiences with animals, the people who worked in our shelters uh, and in our administration, you know, they didn't get into the work because they wanted to work with animals. And so there was a lot of hesitancy and some fear um, about what it would actually look like to physically have animals in the space. Uh, so I think overcoming that kind of initial um, reticence or just worry about having animals uh, in the environment was a huge challenge. Um, and then it was, you know, the using the resources that we had available to figure out what kind of program was going to work within the space and with the staffing that we had. Uh, and so I'd really say that every challenge after that was really overcome um, by starting the size of the program and having the policies that we were capable of having at any given moment um, so that we were never kind of biting off more than we could chew, uh, you know, and saying, great, now we accept pets. And so all animals of all sizes and all types are welcome in all units. Um, it wasn't like that at all. It was really being careful and considerate about, okay, this is the one site we're going to start at. This is where we're um, comfortable having animals. And these are the policies that are going to be in place. And these are the staff that are going to be responsible for addressing any concerns or challenges or things that come up. Uh, and that enabled us to really um, scale up our program um, and grow to a size. You know, now we have our PALS program in eight of URI's 14 domestic violence shelters. We have uh, currently 60 families in shelter with more than 75 pets. Um, so, but we didn't start that way. We started very small and, and a manageable size so that we could address those challenges uniquely as they came up. My advice for any shelter provider looking to begin welcoming pets uh, is to access resources that already exist. Uh, in addition to our program, uh, URI, we provide training and technical assistance to providers uh, who have a similar type of environment as our shelter. You know, so we have uh, what we call co-living, so the families live together with their pets in their own apartment unit. Um, but there's many other providers uh, that are that work in different capacities. Um, that serve different populations. Um, there are coalitions, there are other trainings available, there are animal welfare um, providers that are passionate about this issue and that want to partner. Um, so my advice is really to not uh, see this as something that you have to reinvent or take on um, slowly as your own, that this is something that there are supports, um, there are resources out there, there are people that want to partner, um, to work together, to be able to bring pets into shelter environments. Um, so, you know, build those connections, um, start at asking, uh, you know, what happens to the animals of families um, that are coming into your services, like where if they had pets, what happened to those pets? Does the animal shelter know? Um, just start asking questions and building relationships uh, and figure out how you as a community um, can start to uh, develop programs that accommodate pets. 
I think we all we all know and uh, working maybe working from home or being in people's homes with the pandemic has shown us the joy um, that animal relationships uh, really bring um, to everyone. And so I think that just I, I really want folks to be reminded that for especially people who've experienced trauma, um, who are dealing with homelessness, um, who may be dealing with domestic violence, recovering from any number of things in their lives, just the importance of command companion animal relationships um, and how we're all entitled to that joy and love and um, you know compassion that our animals give to us uh, and that it's just important to keep that in mind um, for everyone that we're welcoming into our services.